my chairman at? Where are my chairman at? Where are the chairman at? I want to say hello to the chairman because I'm on this call to talk to the future chairman. Those that know that they're going to take it to the next level. On the back of this call, you've got to have an expectation. What is it that you want to get out of this call? What is it that you're going to take forward? What is it that you want to achieve in the next 30 days, the next 60 days, the next 90 days? You better declare it right now. This is your season. This is your time. This is you telling yourself exactly where you're going because we all know that whatever comes out of our mouth is very very powerful so let me just hit that record button so we can indeed get started today just give me a moment guys right let me just make it happen so I want to welcome you all onto today's uh, Chairman Mentorship Call. My, my name is Nikki Knows Now. I'm a Chairman 10 here in IM Academy, and I'm super excited to be hosting this call for you today. This call is designed to help you to overcome any situation, any situation, I believe. And this is from my point of view, guys, and I'm going to share a little bit about my story. Story. And then I'm going to go into exactly what it is that we're going to talk about today. In particular, building solid relationships to get the best out of people. Understanding where to apply, apply your time so that you're not wasting your time. And most importantly, how to overcome any situation that you may currently be facing, right? Any situation that arises, I want you to be able to be equipped to deal with different situations. Because if you are on the road to chairman, you will indeed need to be able to to overcome any situation. In fact, today's call is called When They Go Low, We Go Higher. Why? Because we are going to, I want you to adapt, overcome, and win. That's what this call is about. Adapt, overcome, and win. Adapt, overcome, and win. That's what we're here to talk about today. How we can be winning in every season, any season. Adapt, overcome, and win. Can you adapt, overcome, and win any situation? And that is exactly what we're going to dive into right now. And so for those of you that do not know me, okay, I have been in, I am now for just over two years. Two years and, and two weeks to be precise. Now, in one year, 10 months, I was able to achieve the position of Chairman 10 here uh, in, in London, Europe, right? Which was told to me previously that this never happened before. Uh, apparently, no other person that came from where I came from, that looked like what I looked like, ever achieved this position. And so I already was on the wrong side of the statistics, right? Now, when I came in, I started so hungry. I started off ready to take on the world, ready to do my peaking, ready to do my uh, events, ready to get myself stuck in. And within a month and a half after joining, I had hit the prestigious rank of Platinum 600 and I was just about to get to Platinum 1000 and I found out that I was pregnant. Now, in my pregnancy, in the first month and a half, I was told to be on bed rest. Bed rest. Imagine being so excited. Have you ever been in a place where you are so excited, you're so pumped up to start a new venture, and then out of the blue, something happens to hold you back? I want to find out if I'm speaking to the right people on this call. Because that's exactly what happened to me. I came in hungry. I had an idea in my head, but life, life threw an obstacle in my way. Life threw something that I did not prepare for, I did not plan for. And so at one month, one month and a half, I was told that I had to sit on bed rest. Now, I declared out of my mouth that I was going chairman. And how many of you have said, I am so happy and grateful now by this date, 1st of December 2020 or 1st of December 2021 or whatever your date is. How many of you have been saying that over and over and over again? I can remember how many times I said that when I joined in the month and a half. I said it. I repeated it. I said it so much. It was a part of my DNA. It was the first thing I thought about when I woke up in the morning and it was the last thing I felt I thought about when I went to bed at night and to be told that I couldn't do events to be told that I wasn't allowed out to go and you know go and peak interest to be told that I wasn't I had to stay on bed rest now my hip had dislocated so I couldn't even sneak out many times I tried in fact there was one occasion where I was put in the hospital and I actually snuck out of the hospital because I so badly wanted it right now I'm on bed rest for seven months seven months now by the time my bed rest was finished i was a platinum 2000 i want to tell you that no matter what you
you go through, you can adapt, overcome, and win. What was I doing from my bed? I was doing Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call. In my morning sickness, Zoom call. Morning sickness, Zoom call. Morning sickness, Zoom call. And here I was, you know, adapting, overcoming, and winning. I was watching people at events, shutting it down. I didn't, you know, I was watching different people doing different things, but all I had was my bed and a laptop. All I had was my phone and my laptop. All I had was what I had in my room. And so I had to adapt. I had to get my mind in a position where I was not worrying about what everybody else is doing. I couldn't focus on them on the left. I couldn't focus on them on the right because quite frankly, I would go insane. And so I got in my lane, ladies and gentlemen. I got in my lane and I realized that when I'm in my lane, there is no traffic. There's no traffic when you're in your own lane because no one can drive in your lane. And so I had to be in my lane, I had to zone out the noise, and I had to make sure that I was gonna make it for my family. I had to make sure that whatever I needed to do to adapt, overcome, and win, I was gonna do this. Now, I came from the banking industry, and so I had to make a decision very early on in my career whether or not I was going to go all in with this. Because I had to seek some level of authorization because of my position in the bank, right? I was working alongside CEOs making 4,000 a month. And I gave that, I hit P150 and quit my job. I hit P150 and quit my job. My family said I was crazy. Some of my friends said I was crazy. People could not understand how someone who had worked their way up, you know, from really down below, quit their job at Planner 150. Bearing in mind, I couldn't be raw on this call. I didn't even open MetaTrader 4. I didn't even know how to trade yet. I hit Planner 1000. I didn't even know what pips were. I didn't even understand support or resistance. Was it the ceiling? Was it the floor? I had no idea. I saw the comp plan and I saw a way out. And so I want to tell you that you don't have to know it all, but you just have to have an attitude, adapt, overcome and win. And so here I am on bed rest, adapt, overcome and win, adapt, overcome and win, right? I'm on bed rest and I'm doing Zoom call after Zoom call, doing my personal development. And I want to be real on this call. I was looking in the chats and I was seeing what other people were doing and it was fueling my fire. Because I said, the minute I get off this bed, the minute I get off this bed, the minute I get off this bed, ain't no one, ain't nothing going to hold me back. At the time, there was no chair women in the, in, in the UK. There were not. There were no chair women. In fact, there was actually, I tell a lie, there was one chairwoman joint with her husband, but there was no sole chairwoman and definitely none of, of my color, definitely none of where I came from. And so I had to look, I had to look for other individuals to get some, some inspiration, right? But I was determined. I was so determined, ladies and gentlemen, that nothing was going to stop me from getting to where I wanted to be. And one year, 10 months, I tell you this, after I came off the bed rest, one year in, I came off the bed rest, I began to do five home events every single day. I was going from house to house to house to house. When I would leave someone's house, I'm saying, right, in order for me to work with you, I'm going to come to your house next week. Every single house I went to, every single time, I never left that house until I booked another appointment to go to their house in the next day or the next week. And so I built up, I built up uh, events after events after events after events. This is now off bed rest because now on bed rest, I had time to think. I was strategizing for my next plan. I knew where God was calling me to be. I knew that there was a point that he wanted me on bed rest for to prove that you can adapt, overcome and win. I knew there was a purpose for that season. And so when I came off the bed rest, I was, in fact, what we were doing, people who had legs weren't doing. What we were doing, people who had availability to get up and go to events weren't doing. And we were winning big, 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 big. Now, the point of planning in 2000, we started doing these events, home events every day, five home events, four home events every single day. Smash plan of 5,000, then on the way to chairman. One year, 10 months later, Chairman 10. And that was based off of events. I'm just giving you the blueprint of what I did. I'm just telling you what I did. Four to five events a day, back to back to back to back to back. And then when my team began to see me doing it, guess what they did? They began to duplicate. 
duplicate, right? Now I'm gonna show you, right? I'm gonna show you because we're talking about adapting. So I've told you my story, right? I've told you what it is that I did, but we're gonna talk particularly now because that all sounds great. People hear that, you know, she did this, da, 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 da. but what about the obstacles? What about the things that come up that you don't plan for? So I'm gonna tell you in five simple sections on what you can do, how you can prepare yourself to be able to overcome any situation. And so this is the part where you make sure that you take accurate notes, right? We're gonna go five, four, three, two, one. Very, very simple. So the first thing is number five, five ways in which you can build lasting relationships. You see, you see the thing about success is this. I, you know, I hear so many people say self-made, self-made. I, I want to be honest with you. And people that say, I don't need no one. That's a lie. Everybody needs someone. Everybody needs a group of people, even if it's one or two that they can let off steam with. Everybody needs a set of people that are going to help them. You see, even today, my homegirls, Lisa, Dana, they know I'm not a technology girl. So they came round and they hooked me up my, my slides. They hooked me up with my, 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 my laptop, right? Because you need a squad of people. You need individuals that care about you, that love you, that want to see the best of you. And sometimes when you've been hurt in the past, you can block those blessings. You can block those relationships because of your past experience. But I want to tell you today that you must have solid relationships. This is how you overcome certain situations because you have people that can build you up. You have people that are around you that have a genuine heart towards you. And so these are the five things that you need to really build solid, lasting relationships. Now, the first one, as you can see, is trust. How many of you have ever, how many of you have ever had a breakdown in a relationship because of a lack of trust? In any area, whether that be business, whether that be a uh, 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 personal, trust is one of the most amazing things. Trust is something that can take years to build and seconds to break. And how do you really hone in on your trust? How do you get, you know, people to trust you? And how do you also trust in others? Through three things, being consistent, credible, and having a personal testimony. So let me break that down for you in simple terms. Consistency. People will trust you if you are consistent. So if you are consistently on time, they will believe that you will be on time. If you get consistent results, they will trust you to work with you. They will trust you what you say because you are somebody that gets consistent results. Are you consistent in the way that you behave? Are you consistent in the way that you treat people? Are you consistent with how you are performing in your business? Because consistency builds trust, but also consistency can break trust. How many of you have been in a situation around people that have not been consistent? And that has damaged the trust. How many of you have always had people that let you down? People that are, are late for everything. You begin to trust that that's who they are. And so you want to really make sure that you are consistent with your approach, consistent on your attitude, consistent on your behavior. I see so many people that on Instagram are one thing and they are completely different up in the DMs. On Instagram, in the WhatsApp groups, they're one thing and they're completely different behind closed doors. Can you be consistent in your character? Can you be consistent and genuine with who you actually are? Now that links in with credibility. Are you credible? Now, credibility can be broken down into so many things. Do you know what it is that you're talking about? Or do people think that you're always blagging? That you're always, you're, you know, you're someone that just is off the cuff. Are you credible in what it is that you say? Do you give sound advice from the right place? Are you credible with people on, a, on, on an even kill? Now, credibility is one of those things, again, that if not put in the right avenue, it can really damage a relationship. How many of you know people that always tell lies? How many of you know people that you don't trust anything that they say because they are consistent liars? Now, can you be credible in your business? Are you credible when it comes to the charts? A lot of people say they want a mentor and they don't even pay their subscription. They don't even know what, it, what, what the products are saying. Are you credible enough to be able to mentor people? if you don't even know what it is that you're doing. 
And the last thing that builds trust is around personal testimony. How many of you have ever been around individuals that never tell you anything about their life, but they want you to tell you about theirs all the time. They want to find out your business. Personal testimony can really build trust, being able to share something about yourself. But the most important thing about personal testimony is that it's relevant. Because if it's not relevant, it can seem like bragging or boasting or, you know, telling somebody something in an appropriate time. So can you make sure that your personal testimony, do you share things with your team? Do you let them know that you're a little bit vulnerable sometimes and say, hey, look, when I first started, I used to blow accounts, but I found that that was because I wasn't leveraging correctly. When I first started, I used to have loads of people cancel my business. When I first started, I used to be scared to talk on stage. You see, a lot of people, what they don't do is share that personal testimony and make individuals feel like they were just like that all the time. Can you be vulnerable? Because when you're vulnerable, when you share a little bit about yourself, it then breeds trust, right? If you're closed, that can do the reverse and damage the trust. Now, the second one is positive attitude and expectation. Are you positive around situations? I see it all the time where, you know, you will see, and this is where consistent positive attitude, not positive attitude around your friends, positive attitude around people that are going to make you money, positive attitude around those that not necessarily will, will um, give you any in return. Positive attitude around the guy in the elevator that you don't know. Positive attitude around individuals that you communicate with. Are you, do you have a positive attitude around things? I once heard someone say they came in so fired up and they were like, chairman, in 30 days, I'm ready to go. And their mentor turned around to them and said, hey, you ain't going to hear it in 30 days. I mean, positive attitude. Do you set people up with the right expectation? A positive expectation. Someone comes in fired up to say they want to hit chairman in 30 days. You say, excellent. Let me help you get a game plan together for that. Do you give them a positive attitude and expectation to what it is that they're doing? Because I see a lot of times that can damage someone who really is fired up and they get brought down. When someone comes in, I hear so many people watching videos for four to six, to six months. I heard someone on demo watching videos for six months. Are you a true mentor if someone comes in and says, hey, look, I can't afford to pay my bills. I need help now. The conversation that should be happening is, I hear you. I want to mentor you. I want to look after you. So you know what we're going to do is your situation sounds quite desperate. So we need to do both sides of this business and we need to start now. I believe you can hit chairman in 30 days. That's the positive attitude that we should be having. And some of us don't even realize we're negative when we allow people to sit trading on demo for two months. You we have copy and paste systems. They are great to swipe trade. All of a sudden, are they coming on the elite pack? They're making money. But can you have a positive attitude and expectation to someone's situation? Now, number three is one that I could sit and talk about forever. And so I'm not going to go into too much depth about communication. But what I am saying is, are you using the right communication for the right information that you are trying to translate? You see, so many times we are so used to right now text message. We are so used to doing maybe a voice note. But how about picking up the phone in an appropriate way? How about doing a FaceTime? How about making sure that you're connecting with your people? A death in the family doesn't need for you to send a voice note or a text. That needs a call, right? That needs a call. So are you using the appropriate communication based on what it is that you need to get across? So many times you see certain communications happening, right? How do you promote an event? How do you promote an event, right? Are you using the right form of communication, forwarding an event to a group chat? That's not the communication. You may need to do a video. You may need to pick up the phone and call people that you've seen hasn't watched the video. You may need to slide in someone's DMs and be able to speak with them and say, look, hey, this is what's happening. Are you using the right form of communication to get the point across that you need to get? Now, one of the things I want to talk about now is very, very underrated care. How do you show individuals that you care? How do you show people that actually you care about them and not just them paying their monthly subscription? Do you only contact people when you need them to pay? Or do you contact them to talk about other stuff, not just the business? 
Are you somebody that genuinely cares? If someone tells you they're going to the doctors next week or they have a situation with a family member, are you going to remember that, diarize that, to call them to say, hey, how did the appointment go? Hey, how are you doing this weekend? How are your family dealing with that situation? And you, especially if you're planning on going chairman, you're planning on having a large team, right? You're not going to remember all of this. So guess what? You may have to diarize, put a note in your, if it's important enough for you to, to, if it's important enough for you, you schedule it, put a note in your diary, call Jane, call Sarah, call Smith and find out how their mum is because their mum was in hospital. How do you show that you care? Because this is what's going to build lasting relationships. And the last one, empathy. Now, I want to break down to you that empathy does not mean agreement. You don't have to agree with someone to be able to give empathy. Empathy is seeing it from their point of view. So you will have your teams come to you and say, hey, I blew my account. Hey, this happened to me. Hey, these people quit my business. These people are talking about me. These people don't respect me. These people are not listening to me. You will have that, right? And the first thing you want to say is, I completely understand. We need to practice that sentence. I hear you. I understand how you could feel like that. I've heard that before. It's not uncommon. What you're saying is, I've heard it. I've heard it before. I hear you. I know how that must feel. If you've been for it, I too have been through it. And then you follow it up with, but what I have found but what I have found is, let's sort out how we can deal with this today. What I have found is that if you didn't over leverage, maybe these are the lot sizes you want to use. Maybe this is the products you want to use. Maybe this is, right? So it's understanding from their point of view, not just jumping straight to the solution. Make sure that you understand. How many of you have ever worked for someone or been around someone that just doesn't care, that just doesn't show empathy? And you know, now all of this has to be done with a genuine heart, right? It has to be done with a genuine heart. Now, I want to talk to you, especially about the different types of people and time allocation, because this is the one of the things that helped me to really adapt and overcome negativity, really adapt and, and take time to appreciate my time. Because when you're going through things, when things are happening around you and when situations are coming up, you really need to make sure that you are putting your right energy in the time that you have available. And so you're going to come across four types of people. And I want you to take note of this. You have the low value and low maintenance, right? Now, these people could potentially be your customers. These people, they're low value, so they're in. They're paying their monthly subscription every single month. They are trading. They only contact you if they should need something. Low value, low maintenance. They're not bringing anybody in your business. They're happily trading. They're doing what they need to do. And if they have a question, if they have a question, they will contact you, right? Low value, low maintenance. Now, the next set of people is people that you need to be a little bit wary of. These people are low value and high maintenance. Find a way to stay as far away from these people as possible. They are uncoachable. They don't listen to you. They are people that are draining. They're going to be calling you at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, asking you the same questions to what you told them last week. In fact, they're going to be high maintenance. They, they don't bring in any value whatsoever. Sometimes they don't even pay their subscription and they're demanding so much from you. These people you need to stay far from. Do not spend. And the problem is, is so much time gets put into these people because they drain your time. And so they are low value, but very high maintenance. No matter what you tell them, they are not going to do what it is that you've asked them to do. But they're draining, very, very draining individuals. And the next set of people are high maintenance, high value. Now, these people may be a little bit uncoachable. They may be a little bit egotistic. They may be people that, you know, want to do their own thing, but because they're bringing in the value, you kind of see with them. You kind of have a little bit more patience with them. You know that they are bringing in the bacon, as we say in England, right? They're bringing in the bacon. They're doing what it is, but they too 
are a bit high maintenance. They too need a little bit more of your time. They too need massaging. They too need, you know, need to keep being told that they're good and they need the spotlight and they need a little bit extra. Now you have your low maintenance and high value. I want to tell you this, low maintenance, high value individuals are the ones that you want to keep checking in on. These people can get forgotten because they don't bother you too much, but they get the job done. They don't, you know, they don't drain you. They don't, they contact you if they kind of need you a little bit, but they get the job done. These people, low maintenance, high value. Now, you want to show appreciation to these people. You want to connect with them. You want to make sure that you are reminding them that they're not forgotten. Now, these people are so thoughtful that generally they will not even contact you because they don't want to be an, a, a, a bother to you. But you've got to make sure you're open to tell them, look, I want to hear your good news. I want to you to talk to me daily. Let's catch up every other day or whatever it is and encourage them to come and talk to you. Now, here's a great thing is the high value individuals, you can also find out from them. You're never too old or big to learn. Those high value people may be doing something that you could even spread value to the people that are low value, low maintenance to help the low value, low maintenance maintenance become high value people. So now it's about cross-pollination, ladies and gentlemen, being able to take some information from your low maintenance, high value individuals and pass it down to your low value, low maintenance individuals. And you now turn someone who was low value into, low, uh, into high value should they want it. You don't force it down them, but should they want it. But don't forget your low maintenance, high value people. Please don't forget them. They are important. Don't just think that they're getting the job done and you don't need to connect with them. You need to connect with them. Because what happens is, is if you don't connect with them, they can get drained and they potentially could turn into low maintenance and low value. And now you have, you know, two sections of one and you're missing your high value. Really, really important. Now I'm going to show you something else now. Let me see if I can get this screen to work, right? Three types of people when it comes to levels of trust. Now, I promise you, this is all going to make sense for you right now. Three types of people. So I just showed you, right, four types of people when it comes to spending your time. Now, I want to show you three sets of people when it comes to giving your heart, the trust level. Because this is one of the things that I see break people, people who have skill, people who have the ability, people who have what it takes, but because they get involved in the wrong environment, because they're listening to the wrong people, what ends up happening is their results then get drained. And so you have to know the different types of people that you can trust when it comes to your heart, right? Now, the first set of people are your confidants. Now, you will be blessed or lucky or happy if you even get five of those individuals right? Shout out to my confidants on this call, right? You will be blessed if you get five of those. Confidants. Your confidence are people that believe in you and they believe in your vision. They believe in where you're going. They believe in chairman and they also believe in the purpose over your life, the calling over your life. They believe in everything. In fact, even if you wasn't getting the results, they would still be riding with you. They're the people that are going to call you to check up on you. They're the people that love you for you and they are going to be connected to you regardless of wherever it is you go. Your ride or dies, JT says, right? These are your confidants. These people, again, just like the low maintenance, high value individuals, you can sometimes forget them or leave them to last because you know they're always going to be there. Do not forget them because your confidants, they don't care about, you know, they, they're there. They believe in the vision, but they more so believe in you. They want to spend time with you. They want to get to know you. They want to spend as much time with you as possible. That's what makes them happy. So you want to make sure that you schedule time to be around your confidence. They're the people that will take your secrets to the grave. They're the people that you can, you can roll with and you know that they see everything and they have your back. Put some flames in the chat right now for the confidence. If you have a confidant on this call or you have a confident in life, shout out their name. Give them a shout out because they deserve your respect. They got your back. They love you. They appreciate you. They look out for you. They're the ones in the group chats defending you or the behind closed doors when individuals are, are mocking you or saying certain things. Your confidence are going to have your backs. 
Now let's move on to the constituents because the constituents can be very, very confusing. You could confuse a constituent with a confidant. A constituent is not a confidant. They do not believe in you. They do not believe in your purpose or your calling. What they believe in is where you are going, the vision. They may believe in chairman, but they don't believe in you. They may believe in getting to chairman, but they don't believe in you. And so your constituents, they will bring in the bacon. They will bring in the results. But what you cannot do is share your business with a constituent. You cannot put your heart with a constituent because because what a constituent would do, they will duck out, as we say in England. They will leave you heartbroken. Your constituent will get up and go to the next fancy thing. That doesn't mean they're gonna quit. What it means is they're gonna find some next superstar mentor that they found, and they're gonna be listening to that individual because they are the newest kid on the block. Your constituent will dish you in a heartbeat. Your constituent will drop you in a second. Your constituent will be looking for the next best thing. They ain't people that stick with one mentor and focus on them, they're going to be hip hopping, hip hopping, hip hopping all the way around town looking for a new home. They are the people that you cannot trust with your heart because you will pour into them and they will break you. They will break your heart as if you have never existed. They will turn around and say you didn't help them. They will turn around and not give you the credit. They will private message you, but they won't give you the glory in the group chat in front of everybody else. They will talk to you separately, but they're going to be the devious ones behind closed doors that are talking about you so they cannot publicly celebrate you. They will not promote you because they do not believe in you. They only believe in where you want to go. And in fact, your constituents may have a little bit of jealousy about you. In fact, your constituents want to be better than you. In fact, they're trying to outrank you. In fact, they don't care about you. They just care about where it is that they want to get to. And if it means climbing over you, if it means disrespecting you, that's what they're going to do. And so I want to warn you, do not give your heart to a constituent. Do not give your heart to a constituent. They will break you and you're going to need to sit down and do hours, weeks and months worth of personal development to get yourself back off the floor. Constituents bring in the bacon, they do the business and you need to give them just enough to keep them going, but distance, distance not to affect your heart. Your constituents need letterbox access. I want someone to type that one in the chat. How many of you know when the, the postman comes, you ain't letting him in your house, he's putting the letter through the door. You give them letterbox access, the constituents. Yeah, you ain't coming in. You definitely come in, you ain't coming in here. No, Baba, you not coming here, so no, letterbox access. Excuse me, that's my mother tongue, guys. Jamaican born, midday, 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 midday. Democracies, people, excuse my language, right? So letterbox access, where my Jamaicans at? Excuse me, I, 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 I morph sometimes, it's my mother tongue. Your constituents, letterbox access. And then you have your Conrads. Now your Conrads, they, are, they don't believe in your vision, they don't believe in you. They don't believe in who you're called to be. They don't even believe in chairman. Your comrades, all they believe in is the same thing that you don't believe in. So they have joint enemies with you. So whatever you don't like, they don't like. So they join forces based on the facts of the things that you don't like. They join forces based on the things that you don't like. So they join forces with you because you have a joint enemy. Now here's how it works for Conrad. Never tell them your business because they have no loyalty to you, your calling, or your mission. All they care about is the joint mission that you have. And when that mission is over, they're going to drop you. They're going to drop you like it was hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Yeah? They're going to drop you like it's hot. What do I mean? They'll join forces with you for maybe uh, an event, for example, just because they want to be with you on the flyer. They will join forces on you with, with uh, something that you're doing because they want to prove a point to somebody else. It's nothing to do with you. Don't get fooled with those comrades. And now what happens is, is when they leave, they take you and your business with you. So you've got to be careful. You have to be careful what you say around a comrade. Now, here's how I'm going to free some of you today. You see, when you're working with people, how many of you, let's be honest, I'm going to be raw. Sometimes I, I, I felt there were confidence and they were constituents. 
I didn't realize I had comrades. I was treating them as confidants. And so it hurts. It hurts. But here's how I'm going to free you now. You make sure that when you're connecting with people, you know in your mind what they are. And so you can work with your constituents. You can work with your comrades unapologetically, relax, because you know exactly where to draw the line. You know what it is and don't let them fool you because they are very, very clever, like a snake in the grass. Like a snake in the grass. And so you have to make sure that you are ready. I see it so many times that people get broken trust because they put people on a pedestal. They put relationships in situations that they had no business validating it for. They're constituents, they're comrades. Don't invite a constituent into a confidant position. Them need to know them place, man. Know your place, right? And so it's so vitally important that we understand that, guys. So two things. We're going to move on to two things now. Two things you should never do, no matter how down and out you feel, no matter how stressed, no matter how broken, no matter how many accounts you've learned, no matter how many people leave your business, there's two things you must never do. You must never, ever contaminate your business. You always vent up. You never vent down. Don't go around in your circle, you know, your, your team and start to badmouth people. Listen, this is network marketing. People talk. Are you surprised when the pasta pasta goes round? Are you surprised when people call you, you know, call you out? Because people are bold now. They're calling people out, right? Don't contaminate your business. Do not sleep with people in your team. Unless they're your husband, of course, right? Don't be going around contaminating your business. Don't contaminate your business. You can contaminate your trading account by over leveraging. Don't contaminate your business. Do not contaminate your business. That is self-sabotage. Don't do it. Don't do, just don't do it. And don't quit. You, you have no right to quit. If you got a why, if you've got, you know, people that you've made promises to, you have a vision to go chairman, you've got a vision that is bigger than just you, you have no right quitting. I see it all the time where people have a bad day. Don't let a bad day ruin your life. Don't let a bad moment make you forget who you're called to be. Make you forget that you have a purpose on this earth. You can never, I, I, I want to talk to you about words, how powerful they are. Don't ever say it out of your mouth that you're quitting. Don't ever say those words out of your mouth. Don't do it. Don't ever do it. Don't quit. You can't quit. The mission is bigger than you. The mission is so much bigger than you. Now, number one, number one is be true to yourself. What am I talking about? So many times people are looking, looking at people on the left, looking at people on the right, looking at everybody else's situation, trying to copy. Now, I want to tell you this, when it comes to mentorship, when it comes to mentorship, mentorship we know is, a, is the shortcut to success. Now, I'm going to tell you this. There were certain females in the industry, certain females in I am that I looked up to. There's certain females that I was looking at. And, and this is the difference between being coachable, right? Because we, you've got to be coachable. And we talk, we throw this word out so many times. Be coachable, be coachable. Now, let me tell you this about being coachable. Being coachable is not just about copying how many Zoom calls they do. This is about the TNTs. And I want you to write this down. TNTs. Tiny, noticeable things. Right? Tiny, noticeable things. TNTs. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the, the, the coach that was fired from the, the, the British cycling team. Now, the British cycling team had gone to the games every single time they were losing to the Americans. Every single time the Americans would kill the British. And so they got rid of the coach and they got a new coach in, right? They got a new coach in and the new coach began to implement 
tiny noticeable things. People mocked him. People said that it was a joke. You know what he said to the cycling team? He told them, when you go to bed at night, you can only have this pillow. These pillows have duck feathers inside them. These are the pillows you're gonna sleep on. And they slept on those pillows. He said that when you're going on flights, you're only gonna take morning flights because I want you to have as much energy as possible. He also said, when you're going to eat, you're not going to eat after a certain time, right? Now, most people would think, most people would think that you have to be, you know, cycling more. You have to be more in the gym. But this coach, he didn't tell them to do all that. What he did is he gave them tiny, noticeable things. Now, individually, they mean nothing. Individually, just sleeping on a pillow with, 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 with duck feathers is not going to do a difference. But it was an accumulative of those tiny, noticeable things that after years and years and years of the American team crucifying the British team, in his first year of taking over, the UK, the British team, beat the Americans. What am I saying? What I'm saying is so many times we are focusing on the big things, but I want you to focus on the tiny noticeable things. Can you be coachable in the way that your mentor behaves? Can you be coachable in the way that your mentor speaks? Can you be coachable in the way that your mentor posts on social media? Can you be coachable in the way that your mentor dresses? Can you be coachable in the tiny noticeable things? I put it to you that the reason why so many people are not successful in the speed that they want it is because there's a tiny noticeable thing that you are overlooking. There's a tiny noticeable thing that your mentor is doing right now that you've chosen because of fear, that you've chosen because of ego, you've chosen because you want to do it all by yourself that you are missing out on. What are the tiny noticeable things that you can notice on your mentor that you can implement? You see, it's no coincidence that your mentor looks a certain way. It's no coincidence that your mentor does a certain amount of calls. There's no coincidence that your mentor, you know, may speak a certain way in the group chat. It's no coincidence that they promote someone in a certain way. It's no coincidence all these tiny noticeable things, but you overlook them because you don't understand how pertinent they are to their success. You see, it's the tiny noticeable things that gets you the success, not, not the big things. Because it's the accumulative. It's the accumulative of all these things. So is this one Zoom call going to take you to chairman? No. But how many times can you get on a coaching session? Or do you think you've heard it all before? How many times can you take notes on the same thing that you've done again? If Bob Proctor can listen to one thing, The Strangest Secret, for God knows how many years, over and over again, that leaves a clue. You see, you see your mentor posting on social media. You see your mentor saying certain things and you overlook it and think, oh, it's just a coincidence. There's no coincidences. Let me tell them, no, no coincidence. Everything is strategic. And so I hear people, oh, I don't get mentorship. You're getting mentorship 24 hours a day, but you don't see it as mentorship because you're overlooking the tiny noticeable thing. You're overlooking the tiny noticeable things. Now, you've got to make a decision. Do you want results or, you, or, 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 or do you want fame? Do you want results? Because you see, when you're living in your true purpose, you humble, you're happy to humble yourself. You're happy to celebrate others. You're happy to be able to have a clean heart and to be able to use relationship techniques. You're happy to be able to be like that because you know who you are. You don't need to be like anybody else, but mentorship is a clue in what you should duplicate. You see, I once heard someone say, I can tell who that person's mentor is with the minute they open their mouth, the minute they look at their, their posting, the minute they look on their story. There are certain individuals, when I hear them, I know exactly who their mentor is. Why? Because mentorship is not just about running Zoom calls and about hitting a position. Mentorship is duplicating that individual person. But some of us want to create our own system. Some of us want to be, you know, want to do our own thing. And that's fine if you are getting the results. That just means that you may get there a little slower. How many people you know that don't want to come in and copy and paste, but they want to be institutional traders by next week? I, 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 sorry, did I just go there? How many people do you know that don't want to copy and paste, but they want to be the best trader, the best swing trader by next week? 
but they're not willing to do what their mentor did in order to do that, which was to study, which was to go on the sessions, which was to make mistakes. They don't want to do the, the work, the TNTs, but what they want to do is they want to see fast results. Mentorship is the shortcut to results. You should be banging down your mentor's phone. You should be questioning. And this is the thing, the right questions. The right questions will get you the answers. The problem is some of us don't even have the questions. Some of us don't even know the questions to ask. How about you start this? What do I need to do to hit my next position? That's a question. What do I need to do to hit my next position? Can you give me some advice? Do you really want the mentorship? Because it sounds pretty. We, we say all this, be coachable all the time. But the bottom line is, even I myself had to reflect, am I truly coachable? Am I truly coachable? Am I truly coachable? Am I really duplicating these things? Am I really asking? You see, I speak to my mentor daily, right? And you will have mentors, right? You will have mentors that have the result. Now, one of the things I want to touch on, right, is this. Don't ever assume you know what your mentor is going to say. Uh-uh, that's ego. Oh, I've heard it all before. I know what they're going to tell me. You never know what your mentor is going to say. It could be one small nugget that's going to change your entire business. One small nugget that's going to turn your business upside down. But because you thought you knew it all, because you thought that you they were going to tell you everything, you didn't ask the question. Mentorship is the shortcut to success. Why would you want to take a longer route when you can speak to someone who's directly achieved the results that it is that you desire? We've got to drop the ego. We've got to have honest conversations with ourselves and ask ourselves the right questions. What is it? Why am I not moving in the pace that I want to get to? What is it going to take my mind to be uplifted into for me to get to the next level? I had to be true to myself. I had to ask myself these questions. You see, what got you to Platinum 600 may not get you to Platinum 1000. What got you to platinum 1,000 may not get you to platinum 2,000. And so can you, can you ask yourself those honest questions and duplicate true mentorship and then be yourself? Don't compare to individuals. Don't compare to what other people's doing. I see it so often. You don't know what that person went through. Ain't no one posting their failures. Ain't no one posting their blown accounts. Ain't no one posting how many people are quitting their business. Don't compare yourself. Be true to who you are. I believe that there is a calling over your life. I believe that you were called for greatness. I believe that you and only you can perform the mission that has been called over your life. You see this picture behind me, I have it up there to remind myself of where I'm coming from, to remind myself when I did that event, I was broke. When I did that event, I was busted. When I did that event, I was coming out of a damaged relationship. When I did that event, I was hurt. When I did that event, I was declaring 100,000 a month, but I was broken than broke. I was broken and broke. Made it broke. Broke like the bottom of a pit. And I look at that picture every day to remind me where I'm coming from. Do you know where you're coming from? Do you remember where you're coming from? Because if you remembered, you'd have a heart of gratitude. You would not have to compare to no one. You would not have to be grudgeful when someone gets promoted that you can't celebrate them as if you were celebrating yourself. When you know where you're coming from, when you know where you're going, do you know that you are called? Do you know that you are great? Do you know that there's a divine plan over your life? How are you going to compare with someone when that person hasn't got the calling you have? And the minute you start to compare, you're taking yourself out of your own lane, out of your own blessings, and you are starting a journey that you have no business starting. And so I have reminders to remind myself that this girl, I want to tell you through my testimony, that this girl that was once in abusive relationships, once suffered rape, once suffered low self-esteem, once suffered, you know, never feeling good enough, feeling ugly, feeling like I never would be able to speak to people who would truly be, under, be able to understand who I am, once felt like an outsider. I never fit in with the rough people, but I didn't fit in with the good people. I was in the middle and I felt like a loner. I felt like there was nobody around me to be able to uplift 
with me. And you know what I had to do? I had to be true to myself. I had to connect with my higher being and I had to make sure that I fight. I had to make sure that I fight despite being on bed rest, despite having a failed relationship, despite all of the things that were going on. I just had to make a decision to win. I just had to make a decision to make it happen. And you know what happens when you make a decision? The right people, you start to attract the right energy. You start to attract the right people. And so on the back of this call, I want to ask you this question. Are you ready to adapt? Are you ready to overcome? And are you ready to win and win big? You see, you adapt over any right? You have to adapt. When it comes to adapting, this is not sometimes. This is every time. Can you adapt on every situation? Regardless, every situation can you adapt? Any situation can you overcome? And every situation can you can win, right? Adapt every situation, not some, every. I want you to type every in the chat. Adapt in every situation. Every situation, guys, every, I want to tell you, I can adapt every situation, every situation you can adapt. As long as you've got a phone, as long as you've got a laptop, as long as you've got Wi-Fi, as long as you've got data, every situation you can adapt. You can pick up that phone tonight and call 30 individuals and you've got money in your account. You can pick up that phone and place a few trades and you've got money in your account. You don't, you see the business that we're in saved my life. The business that we're in meant that from my bedroom, I had to do the personal development, but I was able to make money from my bed. I've never seen an, a, a, an opportunity like this. Never, never seen an opportunity like this. So you can adapt to every situation. You can overcome any situation. You can overcome any situation. I want you to type any because you need to remember this. So when your, your, your friend leaves you, when they snake you, you're going to look yourself in the mirror and you're going you're gonna to say to yourself, I am going to over adapt to every situation. I can overcome any situation. And I am going to win every single time. I am going to win because you know why? You never, ever lose until, unless you quit, unless you stop, you never, ever lose. You see, I believe that I was called for a time like this. Why? I had to feel the pain so that I could administer that into the people that I'm going to help, the, the ones that I'm going to pull up to the next level. If I didn't feel the pain, I wouldn't be able to depart some of this into you guys. But you see, many were called, but very few were chosen. And so you have a decision to make, not just on the back of this school, but on the back of your life. Are you going to be able to focus on the tiny noticeable things? To focus on making yourself make a difference. To focus on building yourself up. Be true to yourself. You see, I see so many people pretending to be somebody else, putting on voices. And um, I, 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 me, I can't do it. I am just a girl from the UK with some Jamaican roots. And sometimes I just talk a little bit like this. And me don't know what to say to or no. But you just have to be yourself. And when the nasty people come, and when the bad my people come, and when the dirty people them come, and when the nastiness come, you just tell them, I can adapt any situation. I can adapt any situation. And you look in the mirror and you tell yourself, no boy, no girl can step to me. No boy can stop me from living in my destiny. No girl can stop me from living in my dreams and goals. No boy, no girl is going to stop me from adapting, overcoming, and winning. Why? Because I know exactly what it is that I have been called for. I have been called for a time like this. I have been called to be great. I have been called to lift up my nation. I've been called to free my family. I've been called to be able to help my community. I've been called to be able to retire my parents. I've been called to be able to make sure my children don't have to go through what I did. I've been called to make sure that I can help another rape victim. I've been called to make sure that I can help another broke person. I've been called to make sure that anything I put my mind to, that I can adapt, overcome, and win. And so you don't let no boy, I want you
you to chat this in the chat for me, guys, because I'm being unapologetically me. And I'm sorry if you don't understand the colloquial. It means no boy and no girl. But we're going to try it in the Jamaican for me. No boy, no girl, no boy, no girl, no to stop me from living in my goals and dreams. No boy, no girl. Don't you dare let anyone stop you from getting what God knows that you deserve. Don't you dare let anyone who doesn't understand the calling over your life begin to mix you up, begin to stop you and block you and hold you back. And most importantly, don't let yourself take away any negative thoughts. Tell yourself off before the negativity starts to erode in your life and put a stop to it now. And I want to tell you today, adapt, overcome and win. I want you to go into every one of your group chats right now and I want you to tell them, adapt, overcome, and win. I want you to blow up right now and tell the world that you are ready. You are a soldier. You're ready for this army, and you are about to adapt, overcome, and win. It's your girl, Nikki Knows. Now, guys, I am super fired up. This was my first chairman's call. I adapted. I overcame, and I hope you can agree with me that we are all winning. We are all going to the top. We ain't going to let fear stop us. We're not going to let technology stop us. We're going to let, let the statistics stop us. We're not going to let who doesn't believe in us stop us we are going all the way to the top and so i want to see all of you i want to see all of you at the top saying i'm gonna adapt overcome and win and no boy no girl never stop me from getting to where it is that i need to be over and out it's your girl nikki four o'clock no boy no girl never stop me from adapting overcoming and winning love you lots take care Hope to see you all very, very soon. Let's go. Let's make it happen. This is not the end. It is only just the beginning. Let's go, guys. Take care.